In this video, I'm going to build the most Timu PC that I can put together. I know I'm kind of late to the Timu boat. A lot of other content creators, PC content creators, have made videos covering it when it popped up. But Timu actually reached out asking if I'd be interested in partnering with them on a video. And after taking a look at what they have to offer with regards to like PC parts and hardware, I said, sure, why not? I think this should make for an interesting and fun video. Now, if you've been living under a rock, Timu is known for their ridiculously low prices and having coupons for really big discounts. Like they constantly have sales going on for things that are anywhere from like 50 to 90% off. Now, obviously there's the saying, if it's too good to be true, then it must be. You get what you pay for, right? Well, the prices on Timu are very attractive. So what's the catch? Well, we're gonna find out with some of the PC parts that I have here. And before anyone goes accusing me of being a Timu shill trying to peddle cheap crap, I can assure you that will not be happening here. While Timu is sponsoring this video, they do not get to see it or make any modifications before this goes live. Uh, and all the products here are stuff that I picked out with zero influence from them. They weren't trying to push certain products on me. I went through and I found what looked to be uh, interesting enough to showcase on this video. Uh, I also wanna make it clear that they specifically told me that they wanted me to give my honest opinion on all the products and the quality of them, whether it be good or bad. So I like that uh, and I intend to do just that. So yeah, let's check out what we have here. So we're gonna start off with this actually right here. This is an AIO from a company called Manaju. Now I have never personally heard of this company called Manaju. Seems like they are a known company, not in the US, but overseas uh, and in Asia. Not only do they make AIOs, but they do other components too. Uh, this comes in as at, on Timu uh, with their the discount that is going on it comes in at around $55 so here we have everything the radiator and the two fans so I mean this looks as legit as you know an AIO can get the mounting kit uh, for AMD or Intel uh, we have extra adapters for different motherboards for RGB headers and fan splitters and things like that so yeah uh, the AIO, I mean, this checks out. Price-wise, it's not that much cheaper than alternatives that you know we can already get uh, in the States, but in terms of quality, I would say it's, it's on par. It's not any lower quality, which I think uh, some people may have you know, reservations about. Uh, so next, we're gonna open up uh, this bag. And in here, we have multiple goodies, and I'll go through them one by one. All right, we'll start off with the cable extensions, which I got two different cable extensions, regular sleeved cable extensions in black. Yeah, so these were $16, which is a little bit cheaper than you could get usually from either like Newegg or Amazon. In terms of the brand, it's from a brand called Link Up, according to the, the branding on here. It does come with the cable combs already pre-installed. And I mean, with regards to like the quality of them, this looks no different than the stuff that I would buy for like 20 to 25 bucks on, on Amazon. I'm pretty sure most of these cable extensions come from similar places over in Asia. And the ones that make it to the US on marketplaces like Amazon, uh, they just get upcharged so that you can get them slightly faster in terms of shipping. Now this is gonna be the interesting one because these RGB cable extensions, you think about RGB cable extensions, they're usually pretty pricey. So this is the one where I'm very curious to see, but this was $13 when I found it. I think it was so popular, it actually went out of stock and I'm not sure if they're gonna resupply it, but uh, yeah, $13. So this one here is, oh, it was $13 and this is just for the two by eight. So I'm very curious how this is gonna work out. I'll get some better B-roll shots of it as well, but it has the connectors for it to go to your, you know, three pin, five volt ARGB header. All right, so cable extensions are out of the way. Uh, I also bought some, some pretty basic. So this is uh, a multi-set of thermal pads, just silicone thermal pads that you would use uh, on like, if you graphics cards of variable thicknesses, uh, and then just some, thermal paste that actually comes in a little jar. This is Thermal Grease Y5810. Comes with a little spreader. Two bucks for the thermal paste. No weight information or volume information at all on here. This should last easily, uh, if I had to guess, 
30 plus applications. And then for these thermal pads, uh, we've got multiple sizes here. There's 12 pieces, four pieces of each, uh, half a millimeter, one millimeter, and 1.5 millimeters. So yeah, I just wanted to buy these to see what the quality was, see if it was any better or worse than some of the stuff that I've already bought from places like Amazon, Newegg, or uh, like AliExpress and stuff like that. And it's, it's the same thing. Now we've got the memory and SSD. So we'll start with the SSD first. This is from a brand called Target, which I have never heard of up until when I was starting to look for uh, actual PC components on Timu. But Target has apparently been around for years over in Asia. So yeah, just a one terabyte NVMe Gen 3 drive. In terms of the speeds of this, I actually have no idea because it wasn't on the listing. And on the box here, there's also no speeds. Usually they list like the sequential read and write speed, but there's nothing here. So uh, I'm gonna have to do a quick benchmark on this later uh, and see if I can find anything else about this drive. For memory, we are also going with the Target brand and and looking around, I realized I have made a huge mistake in that I only ordered eight gigabytes of RAM. I thought I put two in there for 16 gigabytes, but uh, apparently we're gonna be running this build with eight gigabytes. The pricing on this was pretty much in line. It wasn't any cheaper, it wasn't more expensive. It was just the same as what you could get over here in the US from other retailers. Whether you buy the eight, 16 or 32 gigs, when I compared the prices, they were the same. So I don't know why you would pay the same price for a brand that you're unfamiliar with, with slower shipping times. So in terms of like memory, well, I'm sure the memory is fine because this likely comes from one of the three major manufacturers. So quality wise, I'm sure this is fine, but price wise, if you're in the US, I'm not sure how many people this would make sense for, though if you are a viewer that's outside of the US, then, you know, depending on how much you could get memory for in your market, you kind of just have to do that price comparison yourself to see if it would be worth buying memory uh, on Timu. But we do have it here and it is gonna go into the system. Next up, we have this, which you could probably Hopefully tell by the size of the box what it is, but this is going to be the motherboard. So this is a Maxun Challenger B760M motherboard. So this is LGA 1700. Uh, and we're gonna be putting an Intel processor in here. Maxon is a major brand outside of the US. Their resume includes motherboards, graphics cards, memory, and storage. And they seem to be the only motherboard option at this point on Timu, but there are a handful of motherboard options from them for different platforms like AM4, uh, and then like for this one, LGA 1700. This isn't going for any crazy low prices, you know, being what I'd call, this is a legit product. So it seems the trend here is that for the things that really matter, like the memory, the SSD, the motherboard. Pricing on this is not discounted to 90% or 50% off or anything like that. It is in line with prices that you would expect to pay for something like a B760 and motherboard. This is going for uh, $100 on Timu and it is about $100 for an equivalent brand that is more, uh, you know, popular in the US. And last we have, yes, you can probably guess the case. So, with regards to cases on Timu, there's there's definitely not a lot of options. So this is from a company called League of Do You. Uh, never heard of them. Is it just Do You or is it League of Do You as the whole thing? But this is called the Shark MM. In pink. I wanted the orange one. They make this in both orange and pink. It's got a logo on the front and the back, but man, look at that. That is such a... That is an adorable little logo there. But I wanted this case in orange. They're making them both orange and pink, but orange seemed to be the most popular option and was always sold out, so I was not able to get that. In terms of pricing, uh, so I was able to get this for $60 out the door. Timu always has coupons and stuff going on, so I used the coupon as well as what the discount was going on at the time. And after taxes and shipping, I was able to get this for 60 bucks out the door. And with regards to the shipping speed, I ordered this on a Friday and it came the following Wednesday, which was pretty fast. So with shipping, Timo gives you like a window of when it will be guaranteed to deliver by, which is usually from your order date, one week out to two weeks out. So you would get it between one to two weeks. If it is later than that, if you pay for normal shipping, they will refund you five bucks. If you pay for express shipping and it's late, then they'll refund you 13 bucks. Timu has 
uh, shipping centers all over the world. Uh, this actually came, it came so fast I'm guessing because uh, they have a shipping center also in California. And since I'm also on the West Coast in Washington, uh, it arriving to me from a Friday order to a, the, when, the next Wednesday, that was actually pretty fast. In terms of the quality of this case, just looking at it right now, it does have like branding all over it, which I'm, I don't know if people are into that. I think it looks a little bit over the top, but also it's kind of fun to, to make a video on. I think they really do need to increase the, the different case sellers and in inventory if they want to attract uh, PC builders uh, because I have a feeling not a lot of people are going to be a fan of a case like this. Oh, I just noticed the top. <laughs> There, the magnetic mesh filter also has a little design on it. So yeah, for a $60 case, I think this passes. This is this looks about the same quality as, you know, some of the uh, like AeroCool or uh, Montec budget cases, uh, DIY PC, things like that. The fans are set up in Molex Centipede. So I'm thinking these are either fixed lighting or just using like an internally built hub to control the lighting but i do not see any three pin 5 volt ARG header to be controlled from the motherboard so yeah as expected for the price paid i would not pay any more than that you may have noticed that we are missing quite a few parts for this build and this is all i got from timu and the reason is because they don't have all the components to fill out a build at least yet timu's what like a year old now i don't know if over time they're gonna get more stuff, but to finish off the rest of this build, I have to use some of my own components. So as I said earlier, we have a LGA 1700 B760M motherboard. So I'm just gonna be using my own Intel processor that I have on hand. This is an i5-13400. Uh, yeah, pretty middle of the road processor. Next is the graphics card. Now, Timu does have some graphics cards on their website. None of them I would recommend buying because they're so old and underpowered. We're talking like GT710 and the like. I wasn't trying to slap that into the build. I'm gonna be using a, a graphics card that is more modern and more powerful. This is RTX uh, 3070. And of course the last part, which is probably a good thing that we aren't using some no named unknown brand uh, part is it's gonna be the power supply. So I've got a, a Supernova 750 GT here. They, they don't have any power supplies on Timu. They don't even have like the sketchy no name brand ones that would probably find itself below F tier on the tier list. So yeah, let's get to building this thing. So I'm probably gonna cut through this quite a bit just because some of this is pretty boring standard stuff, but uh, I'll show in more detail or explain some of the more unique stuff specifically to this Timu build. Oh, this is gonna feel so weird. It's been so long since I've used a single stick of memory in any PC build. Um, but it was my mistake, so I'm gonna have to live with it. Then we have the SSD. All right, we are ready to go into the case now. And we are gonna be doing the old micro ATX and ATX tower just because of the very limited selection of motherboards and cases. This was not my intent, but my only option really. I'm actually gonna need to use the Molex cable for this. Not often that I have to use it in modern day builds, but some of these budget cases, that's what you got for the fan power. In terms of the radiator mounting, is this seriously not gonna fit? Let's see, there's not really specs on this case. Yeah, I might have to go radiator in the front because it looks like the top support it's just for two fans, but not an actual radiator, which is slightly bigger. All right, so I looked at the product page and it does indeed say that this case supports 240 AIOs. The only thing is it didn't show any images or say where the AIO went. Now, I mean, according to my fitment, trying to fit this, uh, 240 is definitely not gonna work up top. I mean, 
this only has room really for the fans and the radiator has some distance beyond the fans. Here's the fan and the radiator sticks out this much more, a little bit on the front and the back. So yeah, that is running into the uh, front connectors here as well as hitting the back of the case. We're gonna have to go 240 in the front. Uh, and just to keep consistency of the fan types in the front, I'm just gonna use the fans that are included uh, in the case already. And the two fans that came with the radiator, those can go double exhaust at the top and the rear. There's the radiator installed, keeping the same front fans for consistency in the front. Then we're gonna put these, the back, and the upper back. So airflow path is gonna be like this, and then out this side of the case. I actually cannot get this top fan in the rearmost spot because of the eight pin EPS CPU power. It is in the way when it bends out from behind the motherboard. So, uh, looks like I have to put it closer to the front up here. Time to put the pump block on. Now it is time to apply the thermal paste. So we just scoop a little bit, try and get the equivalent of a pea sized drop. That's a little, about a pea sized drop that got spread a little bit. I let the pressure spread it evenly. As for the rest of this, just scrape it back in like you would the peanut butter jar or anything similar. There's a lot in here though. You could even tell that I used any basically. And now we line this up and get these hand tight real quick. That is good to go. It's not going anywhere. Uh, what else do we have? Graphics card, plugging everything in, and cable management. Oh, please tell me this is gonna fit with the radiator. Okay, yeah, we've got about half a half a centimeter or so. Does fit, man. Look at all that space in the bottom. All right, time to get these RGB cables in. So there's a connector on here that is very small that goes in like this and it's plugged into the motherboard so it could be controlled via motherboard. We have the standard five volt, three pin ARGB header. And the way this works is pretty much the, the silver cables that you see here, these, this is just like any other cable extensions. So the RGB does not go through the actual cables that deliver power. Just like the Lee and Lee ones, it's this plastic uh, layer of tubes up top and it looks like the lights come from these two black boxes right here that shoots the lights through the tubes. And that's where you're gonna get your RGB effect. So uh, I'm very curious to see how this is gonna end up looking. Everything is pretty much in now. All I need to do is cable manage, which is kind of boring. So I might either speed it up or just skip right past all this to the end and show the, the end product. This is pretty much it, <laughs> build is done. I've cleaned up the main chamber as much as I could. Uh, so this is what that looks like. Let me peel this real quick. And then on the back side, there's only so much I could do. This case is not deep at all. Uh, so, and there's, there's pretty limited room because it's a micro ATX. And what, when you use cable extensions, uh, especially with normal size PSUs, you just have so much cables that you have to tuck them somewhere. Uh, I did try to bundle them up and gather them, but this is as clean as I could get it. And again, it doesn't help that this is a pink backdrop with black cables, so it looks, it doesn't look as nice. So let's get this closed up. These Molex connectors, just gotta tuck them down here too. Stick out too much. It has been a while since I've had to apply a decent amount of pressure to close up a case. 
usually, again, it's with the budget cases that you have to do that with, but it does close. Let's get this fired up and take what would normally be known as glamour and b-roll shots. All right, so the build is up and running. I'm a little bit disappointed by this cases, RGB fans. I mean, we've seen this in budget cases before. There's no control at all. This, there's no hub or anything that I can even control with. Uh, the There is an LED button up here, but I think this case was repurposed. If you look at it, if you look around the edges here, the design of this case was not originally meant for tempered glass. It has these little slots in them, uh, which was carried over from whatever previous design this was put on, and they slapped a tempered glass panel on it. But I think this used to be a metal panel that would usually go on here based on what I'm seeing, uh, based on the cutouts here. Uh, but yeah, these fans, there is no hub, even though the top panel up here does have an LED like cycling button. So they are going to just randomly be doing these rainbow designs, unfortunately. But for the AIO RGB power connectors and the fans, those all look really good. Those are all ARGB. Those are connected to a, the three pin five volt ARGB connector. Uh, so those are cycling and looking really nice and those are controllable, but it is what it is. So yeah, uh, I have my laptop hooked up with screen capture software so that we can go through here and take a look real quick. So we're in the BIOS and we can see here that the BIOS build date was uh, within the last six months or so. I took a look at the Max Sun's website for this motherboard and they do have newer BIOS revision within the last few months out. If you want to, I guess you can install that. I'm, uh, if it's not broken, don't fix it kind of person. So unless there's like stability issues or anything that the newer BIOS revisions like has that is actually worth it, I would just leave it on this for now. But we can see that we have our processor detected. Uh, we also have the memory sitting at that eight gigabytes because I messed up and did not get enough RAM. Uh, the, the frequency here, so the memory is not the best memory, which you you wouldn't be able to tell from the product page because they don't they didn't list the timings, they just listed the frequency. Uh, and the box itself also did not have anywhere on here what the like timings or latency was, but this is a CL22 kit, so Normally for 3200, the sweet spot is kind of like CL16, CL14 if you want a little bit more premium, but CL22 is a little bit slower. Uh, I'm not a RAM snob, but I mean, there's no, the cheapest RAM is usually still CL16. Looking at the advanced settings, going down to is it, the PCI subsystems, resizable, yeah, so I mean, enable resizable bar, which is what I usually do. XMP and resizable bar is pretty much all I usually touch, maybe the boot priorities and things like that, but uh, especially for something like this where we're not overclocking, I'm not really touching too many of the settings beyond default. This is my benchmarking drive, uh, just so that I can have the program stuff ready to go, but uh, we're going to still benchmark the the one terabyte SSD there. All right, so I have Crystal Disk Info and Crystal Disk Mark here just to check out the drive and learn more about it, but I don't think I can get much from Crystal Disk Info here in terms of like the, the manufacturer. It doesn't look like it's listed on here. Power on count is 11, which might be from testing or something. Zero power on hours though. There's nothing read or written from it yet. Uh, so before we test that, let's just take Apex, Cyberpunk Grand Theft Auto, sure. That is a quarter terabyte almost. So we're gonna actually move it from drive to drive uh, and we can see some of the speeds there. So we're gonna drag and drop or copy and paste essentially from drive C to D and we can look at the read and write speed and it is going at a decent, it's going at a decent speed actually. Let's see if it slows down though. Typically, uh, after a while, it starts to slow down, especially when it starts to get to the really small, like 
hundreds if not thousands of files that are, are uh, within each of the game install folders. So running at 62 degrees, it's running a little hot. <laughs> There's no heat sink or anything on it. Let's see if it gets hot to the point where it throttles or not. This is, this is quite a bit of data. 230 something gigabytes that was. Uh, and it's sustaining it decently well. Now we got to the little files, which is, is gonna fluctuate, uh, which is normal, but now it's picking back up. So it's looking pretty good. Yeah, so it's a total of 7,000 uh 47 items during the video i'll either cut or speed it up obviously because you don't want to watch paint dry essentially but i'll put the uh the actual tr total transfer time once this is done here you can see it did dip a little bit but it came back up to pretty reasonable levels around like the 700 ish uh, and there we go so we got the transfer over and it filled up 200 plus gigabytes in r relatively fast time the drive did get a little warm uh you slap a heat sink on there uh, to keep it a little bit cooler. Now let's run Crystal Disk Mark on it. So now it's 25% full, not completely empty. Uh, we're just gonna do the default uh, read and write mix. Uh, in terms of the sequential results, this does look like uh, a little bit faster than something like the budgety uh, MP33 from Team Group. Uh, the sequential read speeds are faster because I'm seeing 1700, around 1700, 1500 for right here and then this is 2000 and 1600 so a little bit faster on both sides there but nothing too blazingly fast uh there's not that much information on this drive i couldn't find anything about it so what i did was uh i did end up peeling the sticker back just to see what was behind that and just by looking at the drive i did not see any signs of having dram so this is a DRAMless drive i did saw the controller as well as the nand flash memory and taking a closer look at the nand flash uh, it looks like it is from SanDisk. I tried to look up the serial number, couldn't find anything. And for the controller, after I peeled back the little sticker that told me not to, otherwise the warranty would be voided, I did see that uh, it was an SM2263XT from Silicon Motion. I'm not an expert on SSDs or controllers, but uh, at least we have parts on this SSD that we're familiar with. If anything, going into this, I really didn't have much worry about the motherboard, the SSD, or the RAM, which we can try to find out more information about that. And I don't believe we have to take that apart. So let me see if I can figure that out. All right, so we have RAM on, uh, and we can see more information about it here. No manufacturer name. It's just not readily available information. <laughs> We're gonna try Typhoon Burner, see if there's any additional information here. And nope, manufacturer, interesting. This memory, I mean, it's working just fine. Uh, the, the PC, you know, it's transferring all those files just fine. We're gonna open up a game soon. Uh, but with how cheap RAM is in the States, especially for this one, how it was priced uh, for being 3200CL22, it, it just doesn't make sense to buy for anyone in the US anyways. Uh, let's take a look at some quick gaming benchmarks. Let me get that set up real quick. I wonder how Starfield's gonna run on eight gigabytes of RAM. Let's see if it becomes a stuttery mess or not. Of course, building shaders. My favorite part about any new game. I'm not gonna be benchmarking a ton of games because First of all, we have 8 gigs of RAM in here, but um, I'm just, I just want to check out the temperatures. We're going to run this at Ultra. FSR is on by default, even if you choose Ultra. Like if you change this, it makes it custom, but no matter what settings you change on Starfield, they want you to play with FSR. All right, we are in game. We are sitting at a pretty steady 50-ish, mid 50s FPS, and uh, load on the cpu is actually pretty high uh like in the upper 80s to 90 percent and it's sitting really cool uh i mean we i can't control the fan speeds at all because we did use the molex fans in the front to attach the radiator to uh but i mean it's keeping it pretty cool at such a high load and then graphics card attempts we're in the low 60s uh graphics card load is about uh 80 ish percent maybe mid 80s let me start shooting people. <laughs> We're running at ultra settings too, which the 3070 at ultra is not going to be running that much higher than this regardless. I'm okay with the temps. We can run a, a CPU dedicated benchmark. I think for a GPU, this is pretty representative of, you know, a pretty heavy load. 
uh, CPU, you could do a 100% load, which we can do now. So let me Alt F4 out of this. Let's go to Cinebench. We will do a multi-core, fully load up all the cores, and we can check it over here. Yeah, so all the cores pretty much loaded up to 100% all the way. So we're gonna let it run for a little bit. Then we can look at the temperatures and the uh, package temperature right here, which currently is at the low 60s, but uh, we can let this soak a little bit and see how hot it gets. Usually when there's a problem with the cooler, you will see it get hit, reach the 80s, if not 90s, very quickly, even within one cycle of the Cinebench run. You also have to keep in mind too, this is very much a synthetic benchmark. There's not many people who actually use their CPUs in this way, where they're loading up all their cores and threads to 100%. All right, so we're about halfway through uh, the test, which is a 10 minute default test. Uh, the package is, the, it peaked at 69, nice. But uh, <laughs> it's slowly, slowly creeping up. I'm good to call it here. It looks like we are kind of peaking out for the last three cycles and for the last couple of minutes. Uh, the max temp has not gone over 70. System is stable enough to run games, to run a, a hard benchmark or semi-hard benchmark at least. Uh, we can try what other game would be a pretty heavy load on it. Let me see how Cyberpunk does <laughs> with eight gigabytes of system memory. And we're just gonna go to ultra settings, no frame generation, just DLSS. Uh, sure, we'll keep it at quality. All right, we're in. We're sitting in the 30-ish FPS, but we are on ultra settings. No, no ray tracing though. Uh, hard to save the system memory is what's holding it back. I don't remember what the RTX 3070 performs at. Cyberpunk kind of just kills games. Well, no, we have DLSS on. So yeah, it's gotta be the system memory. Uh, in terms of graphics card load, yeah, the 3070 is not being worked hard at all. Temperatures here looks fine though. Uh, we're not even breaking 50 degrees C on the 13400. That area that we were in just had a lot of people. So that's why the frame rate was a little bit low. But now that we're on the road driving, we're in the 50s now. Again, <laughs> we are gaming with eight gigabytes on a AAA title. It's surprisingly, it's not even stuttering at all. This is pretty smooth. I'm not recommending people play with eight gigabytes of RAM because 16 gigs is so cheap anyways. But uh, I mean, would you have thought this is the frame rates that you were getting with eight gigs on a title like Cyberpunk? 65 average and like mid 30s, 1% lows. This is super playable. Not stuttering, not choppy, not freezing. But yeah, I kind of looked through everything that I wanted to with this system with regards to everything that came from Timu. Like the motherboard, that checked out just fine. I didn't have any worries. Uh, it being from Maxon. Again, the RAM and SSD, uh, just because there's only so many men memory manufacturers and you know, these companies, they buy from them and slap their own label and branding on it. Oh, and I guess I gotta talk about the cable extensions. So for the the sleeve cable extensions, the black ones, I mean, we do have them going into the uh, 24 pin and then the uh, eight pin EPS for the CPU. There's no problems, it's not burning, it's not smoking. And then for the RGB uh, cable extensions for the PCIe power, that surprisingly for the price looks better than I was expecting. For, because this is kind of like a, a simpler part, you know, it's not a memory, it's not an SSD, it's not a CPU, GPU, it's not a motherboard, which is all a lot more complicated. This is just like RGB lighting. You know, you got some LEDs and some, some ribbon and some basic wires. I thought that would be where you would get like the lowest quality, cheap looking crap, but that actually surprised me by looking actually pretty decent for the price. I wasn't paying attention and I died in Cyberpunk, so I think everything checks out here. Uh, we can wrap up the video with my uh, closing thoughts. All right, there you have it. The most Timu PC that I could put together. I wish I could have used every component from them, but that just wasn't an option. We got five out of the eight. I guess I could have gotten six out of eight if I went with the graphics card, but there was no way I was gonna be using a GT710. And they had like the RX 580 2048 SP or something along those lines, I would have totally been down for it. Uh, but they didn't have any graphics card close to that, unfortunately. So this is what we got. What do you think? 
For me, the products themselves weren't really an issue and going in, I didn't really think that they would be. They all worked as intended. It's not like they were some knockoff components that just don't work or were cheap junk. These are definitely legit parts. As you saw, the PC wouldn't have turned on and functioned otherwise. And because of that, we see the prices in line with what these components typically cost and not at some super huge discount that you would normally think about when you hear Timu. Uh, computers are pretty complex, so there's a certain threshold that you have to meet when it comes to quality of components for it to just work and be able to, you know, play Cyberpunk uh, and Starfield and run Cinebench and things like that. It's not like earbuds where you can have like $100, you know, real AirPods, and then you have like $299 wireless earbuds. You're never gonna see anything at that level with regards to like the motherboards, SSDs, RAMs, GPUs, CPUs, power supplies, etc. Maybe for some of the extra accessories like cable extensions or fans, which Timu does have plenty of. Uh, but even in my searching, I didn't find anything that was ridiculously dirt cheap or of really questionable quality in those categories. So as a whole, it seems like PC parts on Timu, if they have them, are similar quality and price to what we'd expect to see on other marketplaces. The issue really isn't about the quality of PC components on Timu, it's more about the variety uh, and the lack of. I'd like to see more offerings for PC building specifically. For SSDs and memory, there is a decent selection. I will give them that. Same with fans and like cable extensions. There's plenty of those, but beyond that, it's pretty barren. I understand for things like graphics cards and CPUs, like yeah, those are like the most intricate hardware that goes into a computer. So not finding those on Timu wasn't the end of the world, but like, come on, PC cases? Those are pretty simple in comparison. And there's literally only one option as of me making this video and when I was looking and it wasn't that great of an option as you saw, unfortunately. It's a pretty cute case, I admit. My wife actually came down earlier and saw it and she like gasped and said, oh my God, that's such a cute case. And she actually loved it and asked if she could have it. But like aesthetics aside, it's not the best case out there, nor is it the best priced. Without the sale and coupon that I used, it was definitely not worth the base price of over $100. Uh, I think it was going for like $128 before the sale and coupon. $128 for that price, you know you can get way better quality cases with better RGB fans and all of that. I don't know, maybe it's just a big package size that comes with the case and the cost of shipping uh, that's being prohibitive to more sellers wanting to sell cases on Timu. Uh, but if they wanna be competitive and draw in the PC building crowd like other marketplaces have successfully done, uh, they have to offer more than they do now across the board. They are still relatively new compared to their competition. So maybe all of the supplier relationships haven't been established yet uh, and that might come in time. So we'll have to wait and see. Bye for one will always welcome more online options for people to buy from. So I hope over time Timu's PC hardware selection expands. They're doing okay in some categories, but not so much in others. All right, that's gonna wrap it up for this video and my first time experiencing shopping on Timu specifically to build a PC or most of a PC. <laughs> I'm very curious now to hear your thoughts. Have you ever shopped on Timu? And if so, what did you buy? And how was the quality of what you bought and your experience with what you bought overall? Uh, and if you haven't ever shopped on Timu, I'm curious why not. Is it because you never heard of it or because you think bad things about it? Uh, and overall, what are your thoughts on Timu, whether they be good, bad, or neutral? I'm just very curious to hear what everyone has to say down in the comments. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna be it for me though. Hope you all enjoyed and found this entertaining or helpful in one way or another. I wanna thank you all as always for watching and for continuing to support the channel. I wanna give a big thanks to the channel members and the super gifters as always for their above and beyond support. Uh, and thanks to Timu for sponsoring this video and for allowing me to give my honest opinion. Uh, as always, be safe out there and I'll see y'all down in the comments as well as in the next stream and or video. Bye.